I'm Kevin Ormsby, Program Manager for Cultural Pluralism in the Arts Movement Ontario, for short, CPAMO, C-P-A-M-O. My work with CPAMO is around programming um, for various events, um, coming up with concepts, research material that is in the benefit for arts organizations and artists, primarily people of color um, and also indigenous artists and arts organizations. We work in a very collaborative framework supporting the advocacy, the implementation and the strategy for organizations in their equity, diversity, inclusivity and pluralism, EDIP framework. Uh, the recent decrease um, in funding by the, the government of Ontario to the Ontario Arts Council is challen challenging and problematic, I think, in many, in many contexts. Number one, um, it's going to be problematic for their priority groups, which is part of their track plan moving forward, which include people of color, indigenous artists, new generation artists, and so on, uh, artists with disabilities. The problem we have here is that Sopamo's mandate is to, is to support the development of priority POC artists, racialized and marginalized, marginalized artists. And so this particular decrease will mean that we would also be in a space of challenge in providing the support to those particular priority groups in their applications, in their creation, in their showcasing, um, and also in the representation of POC bodies across um, Ontario. Another part of the challenge is if they have received less funding or if they will receive less funding, it simply means that organizations on operating funding will also receive less funding and will then therefore shrink once again the resources that they can offer to these particular priority groups for which Shapamo works. It's, a, it's literally shrinking in the, in, the, in, the, in the cultural impact of on Ontario and also then in the cultural product, the potential cultural product that Ontario can uh, sent out to the rest of the, the country, but also to the world. To broaden the context even more, uh, the decrease in funding affects directly immigration to this particular country. Um, we know that immigration persons immigrating to this country also contribute to what the budget is for the arts. We know that there are newcomer artists who are also arriving in this particular space. And so this decrease is about actually decreasing the capacity and the potential of what um, the arts can do in public impact. Uh, that particular statement around public impact is also very much embedded in the application system uh, at the OAC, the Ontario Arts Council. And then therefore it's a focus um, around a decrease in public engagement. And if we're decreasing public engagement in the arts, we're then also looking at a decrease in how and where funding, support, engagement, activation of the art happens in the communities, in the homes, where they matter. We can further understand this sort of context um, around if the art is a reflection of society. Um, if you cut the art, then you're literally cutting how, the ways in which society is engaging with the arts. Um, I'm very concerned given the fact that through digital technology, through digital media, through the many ways in which Sopama provides support and development for the artists, that this particular work um, of reducing a budget that was already approved will be challenging to the artists who in this particular province where we have most of the artists concentration across the entire country will not be achieving their fullest potential. They'll be investing in education and in schools again funded by the government, for which they will not be seeing the returns. Um, I think we should broaden the context to understand that the arts is also very much reflective in the education and system, um, and we know that those persons and students participating in the arts are actually favoring um, to be better citizens, better animators of space because of their artistic experience. So the particular cut and decrease will be challenging moving forward as it also places, places the economy for the artists in a state of uncertainty. And no one really wants to create and or work in a state of uncertainty. This precarity um, is even more problematic for the artists in terms of how they create, how they organize, how, with whom they work, how do they pay for their membership, how do they pay for the homes in which they live, and in particular, when I say artists, I want to be also very clear and be very, rather specific around the work that Sepamo does. So if you can imagine this precarity across the artistic or the creative industry, imagine the precarity that is involved for a person of color, 
as an artist or arts organization, or the precarity also with the indigenous artists and arts organizations for which also Sapama also collaborate and work with. Um, it's, it's going to be an interesting moment where we have to start to advocate for artists working beyond precarity. Um, we have to look at the business of the arts as an integral part of the making of the arts and Sapama is really passionate about the work they do in actually connecting those two spheres but also working with those who have been also historically privileged in, in the arts, in arts creation and also in arts organization.